Hello again, and welcome to another edition of Listen Up a Minute. I am your host, John Dowell, and as always, want to start off by thanking L.J. Brown Enterprises and Chico, Larry Brown Jr. up in New York, and of course, Derek Wright of Full Motion Videos, because without these guys, we will be talking to ourselves. Good to be with you once again, and uh, our last show for the year, and I have uh, Mr. Hal Miles with me. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Good to see you again, a dynamic hero in our community, also known as Coach Miles for some. Right. Motivational speaker, lifetime member of Phi Beta Sigma C, you got your golf shirt on, repping your fraternity. Yeah, yeah we had an activity <laughs> there. <laughs> in a meeting. In a yeah. meeting, and... Uh, member of Jesus, Jesus Christ Church of Latter-day Saints and Concerned Black Men, uh, a lot going on. Uh, so, t And, of course, you, well, you're not 16 years old, so you... you That's right. <laughs> long ways from being. Lo lo hey, long, long ways from that. Yeah, so uh, tell us a little bit about how Miles the coach, the community person, the business person. Okay, well, um, the blessed part is um, um, I have the opportunity to do something in the community that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and uh, had a little diversity there when you know when I was growing up because my father was in New Jersey, uh, and uh, my mother was in Petersburg, and uh, so we moved to New Jersey when I was little. We moved back when I was still little. I was in elementary school, mm -hmm. and uh, but because he had a construction company, he stayed up there. So he only came home on the weekends. Okay. And uh, so during the summer we was up there, so we got that experience. So we was in. Uh, a lot of Catholic church programs, a lot of summer programs, boys and boys and boys club, YMCA stuff like that. So we had good exposure. Um, but the thing I loved most was this community down here, in Petersburg, because when you came down here, it was a little bit different. It was a little bit more freedom. It was a little bit more choice. Up there, in this uh, a teenage boy in Newark, New Jersey, they you could be forced into doing things that you didn't want to do. Where um, um, the cliques, the gangs, or whatever you say, the community could make you do things, mm -hmm. uh, like a, grab a 10-year-old behind his neck and make him say, run this bag across the street because they know you're not going to get arrested. They'd make you do stuff. In Petersburg, mm -hmm. nobody made you do anything. If you, if, if, if you did something wrong, you made the rational decision that you thought it was cool to hang with that group and you wouldn't hung with them. Okay. Nobody was forcing drugs on you. Nobody was forcing anything on you, uh, gangs or any, anything else. Matter of fact, the community was more protective of you. Mm -hmm. When you was in your community, that's when you felt the most safe. <laughs> and uh, so up there was just the opposite. Even in your community, as a teenage boy, you didn't feel safe. Uh, Blanford, uh, historic, at one time was independent of the city of Petersburg, established back in 1948. Uh, mm -hmm. What was it like growing up in Blanford, just a snippet? It was fantastic. <laughs> uh, even though it was um, doing, um, we still, when, when I came there, it was still segregation. Yes. Uh, but people treated you different because you were from Blanford. Uh, we used to go down to Fort Lee, ride the bus. The bus bomb was in Blanford. Even though we didn't have fare, they knew we were Blanford boys. They would give us a ride. Okay. And those, those were the white bus drivers. Uh, that, uh, the last bus of the night leaving Fort Lee, coming back to the bus bar in Blanford, in Blanford. they would give you a ride because they knew, you know, you were from Blanford. Just from being from Blanford, even um, um, people that wasn't of color treated you different because they knew you were from Blanford. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they had a lot of respect for Blanford. Okay. And they didn't come over there doing anything in Blanford, <laughs> neither. I can remember as a kid in 68, right after Martin Luther King died, um, the KKK uh, wanted to get a permit to march the, uh, from Chesterfield through Colonial Heights and across the bridge to the courthouse. And Colonial Heights and Petersburg wouldn't give them permit, but they decided they were going to do it anyway. And, uh, and uh, they made it halfway down the hill, and the brother shot a couple of rounds off in the car, and they were throwing them hoods away, running back up the hill. <laughs> they was almost running into each other, trying to get out, they leave Petersburg alone. Uh -huh. So Petersburg was a different place. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand, even during segregation time, Petersburg was a little different. And, uh, and uh, I remember as a kid, uh, Martin Luther King coming to Petersburg. Uh, uh, he stayed with, um, uh, at Y.T. Walker House, uh, 514 Harrison Street, the house is still there. Yeah. I think it'd be a good um, project historical project to restore that house. Uh, I remember in 1965, when he first spoke out against um, um, this, um, uh, the Vietnam War, I was in elementary school, they had just built Daniel Jim, and the first person to speak in there was Martin Luther King, and he spoke out mm -hmm. against the Vietnam okay. War. So that was a historical thing for me. So when I went to Virginia State, when I walked into that gym, you know, uh, it was like hologram for me. Mm. And a lot of people don't even know their own history, don't even know 
how the people in Petersburg played a role, a major role in the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm talking about white and black. You know, we, um, at, in between, I'm a chemist by trade. Okay. So when I finished Virginia State, I went into chemistry. I went, worked at uh, General Tire. Then I went down to Newport News Shipyard as a nuclear water chemist. And then I got recruited by Honeywell. I came up here as quality control, quality assurance chemist. And I was over top of a couple of labs. But after about 15 years, I built my own house. And uh, so I left, took a package at Honeywell, and I wasn't working. So uh, one of my men mentors, uh, L.T. Harrison, who was the principal at Peabody at the time, which was the middle school, uh, junior high, and uh, he asked me, he said, hey, man, why don't you come on down here? We're doing it. We're developing this STEM thing. We need some professionals uh, that had actually uh, done the job, that actually lived it, you know, uh, the sciences. And uh, I, I had. So I went down there, and I taught school for three years at Peabody. And while I was down there, I met some interesting people. One of the people was Ma Jones. She was a white female teacher from Den She was from Denwood County. But the interesting thing about her, the kids, the way they perceived her, the black kids received her, perceived her that they, you come to me and say, I ain't think that lady a racist. I said, why would somebody racist come to a black high school mm -hmm. and want to, I mean, middle school and teach you? I said, why? That doesn't make sense. So I, I, I took time to get to know her. She was on our team because we taught by team. And I found out some interesting things. She was one of the freedom riders. Why would that they assume she was racist? Because, because she, was, they, she was strict. She was strict. Oh, oh, okay. She was strict. So <laughs> they didn't, they couldn't have their way and do what they okay, wanted to do okay. or couldn't do that. They figured she was against them. <laughs> and then, so I was in charge of the um, 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 Black History program, mm -hmm. and we invited some um, icons to yeah. Peabody that was from the area and um, that was still alive at mm -hmm. that time because this was in uh, 95, 96. And, um, and uh, so in the program, um, uh, we, had, um, uh, we, uh, we had her at the end because I knew she had marched with Martin Luther King okay. down there in, in, in Montgomery. Okay. So, uh, so when we got to the end of the program, I said, yeah, and then one of our own, I said that March with Martin Luther King who was a freedom rider and marched with Martin Luther King from, and, and Montgomery. And I said, one of our own teachers, and the kids were sitting up there waiting for him to come out, and then I would walk, walk, walk on Maud Jones, mm -hmm. Mrs. Jones. And they were like shocked. Their whole attitude toward this lady changed. You see, they, they, nobody assumed that, and, you know, because mm -hmm. they didn't know what she had done and what she stood for. Mm -hmm. Now you know the person. You see, uh, I tell people all the time, my grandfather, um, and my father taught me critical race theory when I was a child. And uh, so now that I'm on the school board, people say, do you think we should teach critical race theory? I said, not if we don't have a good conclusion. Not if you don't have a good goal that you want to achieve. If you're going to do it to create division, to create confusion, make it feel like somebody owes you something, that's not the reason for the teacher. If you're going to teach it for the history to understand, hey, how can we keep from going back into the pitfall, mm -hmm. you can do that. But critical race theory, to make it simple, you need to understand, everybody black is not going to be for you, and everybody white is not going to be against you. And that's why I was taught growing up. So when I deal with people, I look at their character. I look at what they're about. You see what I'm saying? Because the world don't owe you nothing. True. You might think they owe you something, but they don't owe you nothing. And if so, and, and, but you do have dominion over it. So learning is power. If you don't know nothing, you have no power. So get out there <laughs> and learn something. Every day. <laughs> you mentioned earlier uh, the house that Y.T. Walker used to live in would be a good building, a uh, restoration oh, project. Oh, man, that would be a great yeah. restoration Your project. father was a master builder. He was a master and builder. And he taught you and your brothers. So explain to us what a master builder is and some of the things well, that he, he taught was, you all. Okay, and, and that's interesting. Let me tell you a little bit about my father and mother. They met at Virginia, Virginia State University. Okay. Both of them from Denwood County, they didn't know each other. One was from the Peacebrook side, the other one was from way over there on the Blackstone side, mm -hmm. all way out there. So they were like 40 miles apart. Uh -huh. And uh, so my daddy actually went to school in Petersburg because he okay. was from Piney Beach. And, uh, cause it, um, and my mother went to a little schoolhouse out there in Denwood, way at the other end. And uh, so when they went to Virginia State, my father was a few years older, so he was there first. And when my mother got there, they met each other. And uh, so she was a home ec major. And uh, she was um, working for um, Joseph Owens, the first black city councilman okay. and, um, in, in, in Petersburg, a his, very historical guy. 
uh, figure in Petersburg, and because um, he owned he owned his own business. He had owned a tailor shop, cleaners, different things like that. So she was, by her being a home ec major, sewing. She, because my mother was a tailor, you know that. Okay, yeah. And then my father, he went to school to be an entrepreneur too. He he took building construction. He took everything he had. Then in Sims Hall, they tore it down there. It's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. It was at the foot of the hill, right there by um, the river. Yeah. And uh, so he did that. So when he came out of um, Virginia State, he started his own construction company. That okay. was his goal. Okay. So he got a contract working um, to build two girl dormitories at Women Mary. Oh, nice. And then after okay. that, that was with the state, and then after that he built Warwick High School. Mm -hmm. oh, the nice. old okay. Warwick yeah, High School. They tore it down, they done built a new one there. And uh, so then after that he couldn't get another job. So mm -hmm. he ended up going to D.C. He ended up moving to D.C. and uh, built the waterworks, and after that he couldn't get another job. <laughs> so he ended up going to New Jersey. That's how we ended up in New mm -hmm. Jersey. And then once he got up there, work with just plentiful okay. because up there they don't do like they do in the south and have all this historical stuff you can't tear down yeah. i mean everything is money demolition is money construction is money Move, moving it is money everything is money so they keep the cycle going yeah and so the cycle was good up there so he got with uh, um, some guys that uh they network and one of them was a jew one of them was a german and one of them was italian and they network and they had their business and they did very very well and he looked out for a lot of people. So building construction was in our blood. He told all his son, we, ha we had to work for him during the summer when we were 14. <laughs> and he had a crew that went up at, at, um, at the height of the, of the year when the weather is the best, because you know weather have a lot to do with yes, construction. Yes. Uh, he has many, employs many 60 people. Okay. So that was a nice size company. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the other people that influenced you, uh, not only the community, but you are elder of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I, I tell you what, when I come across someone positive and, and that uh, helped me along my way, mm -hmm. um, um, even in elementary school, I had some great influence. Um, 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 Miss uh, Ruth Harrison, she uh, was uh, my mentor, which is L.T. Harrison, mm -hmm. Leon Harrison, but she was the librarian and reading instructor at Blanford Elementary okay. School which we call, because we're from Blanford, mm -hmm. Blanford State University. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, in, but anyway, uh, she taught me how to read. Okay. And I had to go there because I was, in, uh, I was uh, behind in reading when we, when we moved to Petersburg mm -hmm. because uh, I had a, a speech impediment that they had to correct in kindergarten and first grade. So when we moved here in the second grade, I was way behind in reading. So okay. she taught me how to read. So I would whiff her for four years, Monday through Friday for one hour, um, um, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade okay. and she caught me up. So when I finished sixth grade, I was on level. Okay. Then the other teacher was uh, Miss Jermaine Fauntleroy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, she was my math teacher. Okay. And Miss Fauntleroy went on, which is another historical figure, she was the first black female yeah, superintendent, superintendent of in the system. state of Virginia. Yes. Oh, Not just yeah. Petersburg, but it's in the state of Virginia. Virginia. Okay. So the thing is that she made history there mm -hmm. and uh, in Petersburg and in the state. So, uh, but she was my math teacher in elementary school, and uh, I, I remember that I thought I was, that was the only subject I was really felt like I was good at. <laughs> and, but I didn't know how good I was at Okay. It. And okay. then one day, uh, we had a test, because we were doing some, something different in math, and that she was teaching, applying, uh, trying to get us to learn a new application. So I took the test, I'm used to getting all A's, all, all 95, hundreds, right? <laughs> so I took the test and got a 79. And when I got the, and when I got the grade, you know, I put my head down, and one of the guys in there, a friend of mine, his nickname was Axe, he said, man, look at that old chump crying over a grade. And I had my head down, and I never compared myself to the other kids in class. I was just yeah. used to, I thought it was a bad grade for myself, because mm -hmm. that's a D, you yeah, know, yeah. and uh, for us. And um, back at that time, I think it was 75 to 79, 79 or 80, 80 yeah, was a right, D. Yeah. So mm -hmm. anyway, right, yeah. um, so anyway, Miss Fonderoy said something that changed changed my whole attitude because I didn't know I never compared myself to other kids. She said if he said if he's crying, everybody in here should be crying because that's the highest grade in class. <laughs> 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 and, and, uh, and and then I said, well, uh -huh. I, then I started thinking, how do I compare? So when I mm -hmm. finished Petersburg High, I I was in when it came to math, I was one of the top three okay. in math, and I had all the math. I was in scientific collegiate. Uh, I took the uh, you, you know I took. Uh, 
So that was all the calculus man, calculus and tree. No, they didn't have calculus. We <coughs> didn't have calculus. calculus. And, no, okay. we didn't get calculus till we got to college. We had tree. Okay. They had something similar to pre-calculus. Okay. But we didn't actually do calculus. Calculus, um, people that take math, a lot of times they don't even know um, um, the definition of the math they're taking. <laughs> You know, <laughs> algebra is problem solving. Yeah. Then you had geometry, which is, uh, you, you, you know, your uh, shapes. Angles. And then you yeah, had trigonometry, which is triangle. Mm -hmm. And um, um, and um, those, um, uh, the right triangle, not inner triangle, the, oh, right, the right triangle. right triangle. You know, and, uh, um, and, um, and then you have calculus. Calculus is not regular math. And I'll tell you why, because calculus just, um, you have four types of calculus. You have limits. So you're not going to have a good exact answer like you do normally in math. Okay. You have limits. You're going to have um, uh, differential equations, differentials. You're going to have, you know, so it's like four different things. All of it is studying limits. Okay. Okay. And you got to kick out the bad ones that don't fit. So it's not exact. When you okay. do math, normally you do math. You say math it's is exact, exact science until right. you come to calculus. Okay. It's not exact science because you got probabilities. You got a lot of stuff going on. So you're really looking at limits. Mm -hmm. So, but see, I mastered it, and I was able to use that. So the thing is that that's what I was good at. So when I majored in chemistry, it was because of my math background. Okay. That's how I got a scholarship in chemistry because my math school okay. was so high. Okay. So, and when I took chemistry, what made it work was I could do the calculation. Okay. So I, I understand the and you know how mm -hmm. and you know how to put it all together. So that's what helped me was the math. And I think mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, someone told me that Dr. Fonleroy's late husband was a chemist. I think someone. No, nah, he was. I don't know. Some, I don't know. He could have majored maybe, in chemistry. Maybe. And um, but it's um, but he was a supervisor at um, sewer luggage. Okay. He was like a maybe. I don't. This was a, this was a guy that was he was, school he with him a while back. Yeah, he yeah, said he, he was a chemist up. too. Maybe. But I then again, know. a lot of us didn't get the opportunity the right, way true. the way we get the opportunity now. Right. Because you know they could major in something. Now, when I went to Virginia State, you had three chemistry majors. Oh. I mean uh, degrees. You had one for okay. educational, hmm. one for pre med, and, and and we had research. Okay. I took. I was the only one that was in research. Oh. So I had a um, two professors that was really authorities in chemistry. Okay. One of them was C.C. Lewis, he was an analytical chemist, and then I had Dr. Moffitt, who was an organic chemist. Okay. And uh, I pretty much, Moffitt pretty much mentored me. Okay. So he was um, a retired chemist that he got to come to Virginia State from Ohio State. Mm -hmm. He was an authority in organic chemistry. Okay. So I really got the best of the deal there. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. out of my group that graduated from Virginia State, I was the only one that went into uh, chemistry restaurant went to med school. I know uh, a lot of people that go that route and they really have no love for organic chemistry. <laughs> med students, <laughs> no, they, it's not they have no love for no, organic chemistry. No, well, that's the thing that filter them out. <laughs> yeah. Chemistry yes. would filter, mm -hmm. organic yeah. chemistry yes. would get that's rid of, would say, filter y'all. Yeah. That'll make yeah. you change, that'll change, mm -hmm. make you change your I'm, route. I'm pretty, we, were talking, we were talking <laughs> make before the show. Make you change your career path. You were telling yeah. us about your niece who's going to med school. And I, if she hasn't, I'm pretty sure she could tell you some stories yeah. about organic yeah. chemistry. Yeah, <laughs> I, done, I done had a couple of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> done very well. And, um, and uh, so, um, yeah, but that's, um, yeah. uh, it's not for everybody. Yeah. It's not yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. You were inducted into the uh, Petersburg Athletic Hall of Fame. And that was a couple of years ago. Congratulations yeah. on 2019, that. 2019. And, and yeah. talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I was inducted to but. That meant a lot to me. I got inducted to Virginia State Hall of Fame in 1990. Oh, nice. And, um, but um, they started the Petersburg Hall of Fame in 2015. Mm -hmm. And then in 2019, I got inducted. Okay. And um, um, I had a uh, uh, lifetime career in the sport of wrestling. Yeah, right. Because I was a coach my whole life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I coached college, I coached high school, I coached international, and I had. Uh, one fellow that I worked with uh, with Team Foxcatcher, with Team Foxcatcher, I had one three-time World Olympic champion, Mark okay. Schultz, mm -hmm. and uh, so that we had a good run back in the day, making the Olympics in '88, yeah. different things like that, making that Olympic team. So that was pretty cool. And uh, a lot of people from this area, they might not ever get a chance to even touch base with those type of programs yeah. or yeah. get even come close to those type of level. But the thing is, it was good experience. We had a long run, a long run. So that was um, that was great. But being inducted to Peaceville High Hall of Fame, Pe not Peaceville High, Peaceville Athletic Hall of yes. Fame, meant something because that's my hometown. Yeah. And uh, to be there with your peers, to be able to uh, go in there with your peers, that was great. Mm -hmm. 
And, and this year, my brother Van getting inducted. Oh, nice. Oh, for nice. 2024, Van okay. getting inducted. Okay. He went to Tech. Yeah. He wrestled yeah. for Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. So, we, we, we. You know, and wrestling is one of those mm -hmm. sports that you don't really hear a lot about it until it's championship time. Right. Or, or Olympics. It, it's, but, and so. But, but now that didn't change. See, it's Nanda changing, changed. Yeah, yeah Nanda changed because of the money involved. Yeah. See, everyone getting paid. When they did away with those amateur sports and Olympic um, athletes, when, mm -hmm. when, when you don't have to be a, a amateur an amateur in the Olympics no more, right. Nanda getting paid. So you got the big thing right now is female wrestling. Yeah. Okay, you got female females right now that haven't even graduated from college. They're millionaires because they're successful in, in, mm -hmm. in, in international wrestling. Yeah. And I mean, young girls, I'm talking yeah. about. 18, 19 years old, that they out they there competing an worldwide, yeah, they, worldwide, and they getting paid, and yeah. they got sponsorships, and not just sponsorships. If you win a gold medal, that's half a million dollars, man. Yeah, and it, it, world it, or Olympic. Well, yeah. So and then the silver is worth something. So the thing is that you go out there and make a living for yourself. And it, if it, you can it kind of levels the playing field with yeah, us no. against the rest of for, you know for years, mm -hmm. our athletes didn't get paid. You had to have a sponsorship by That's some right. company. Matter of fact, and then after Amateur it was sports, over, well, what did you do? If you got paid, you can be in amateur sports. Right. So you see, you, and right. see that was the right. thing. Now you don't have to deal with that anymore. Right. Everybody can yeah. get paid. Yeah. And see, that's what I love. Now, I wish they'd have had that when I came yeah, home, yeah. because we could have got paid. <laughs> yeah, it would have been nice. <laughs> because we was on that level. Yeah. And the yeah. thing is, is that people going to support you. Mm -hmm. and But they wouldn't allow you, even they in college, allow you. if you received anything, then you lose your scholarship. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's not fair, because yeah. they're making money, but you can't even get, mm -hmm. you, 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 you can't even get a meal. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Outside of the cafeteria. Right. right. The, the you know, coach, that's illegal. Yeah, the coach couldn't buy the team a pizza. He couldn't, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. He got to go through the program. Yeah. Everything got to go to the program, got to be legit, got to be documented. Yeah. So, and, and if you do something outside that program, even, even if an alumni slides you $20, you could lose your scholarship, you scholarship for $20. Yeah, for $20. Yeah, because yeah. you walk around with no money in your pocket, they don't want you. That's when a young man going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any money in your pocket, a young man can get in trouble. Oh, yeah. You need money in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need money Folks, in your pocket. Folks, we're with Hal Miles, uh, community, community person, organizer, businessman. Uh, former chemist, mm -hmm. champion wrestler, the mentoring part. That's the, everyone that's that what knows did you me. That's know my heart that, right yeah, that that's you my have heart been right a mentor yeah. way back when okay. before mentoring was cool right. or the end thing. Uh, I remember you started the track team mm -hmm. in Blanford, <laughs> and Blanford. you T-shirts that you drew the stripes on there with the own yeah, magic be, markers. Yeah, before and, we had them made professional. Yeah, before you had them made professional. The first year we actually, yeah. we actually did it ourselves. Yeah. And then after that, we had them um, had, um, yeah. um, um, made. Yeah. And we got to that part and they had everything everybody else uh -huh. had. But the main thing, these kids was all local. Yeah, and, local um, kids. And over that period of year, I started coaching at, at 19. Mm -hmm. So I created that team when mm -hmm. I was 19. I a sophomore at Virginia yeah. State, and I wanted the kids to have something to do during the summer, mm -hmm. so I started a track team because the kids in, in Blanford could run. Yeah. And I used the kids from Blanford. Mm -hmm. And those kids took me all over the country as far as they took me to the national championship mm -hmm. every year, wherever okay. it was, yeah. Albuquerque, New Mexico, wherever it was, we had somebody to qualify and, and had kids to place. Yeah. And see, that was the thing. But even right now, I'm, um, um, I'm on the school board, but um, I mentor. Right now, I'm, I'm with Concerned Black Men. Concerned Black Men, yes. Uh, I'm, uh, the Million Man March was the one that influenced me. Okay, how and so? And changed. And what happened was um, um, in, in 1994, uh, Clinton passed the Velvet Crime Bill mm -hmm. that took the prison population from 500 to almost 3 million. And they started the private prisons, and they set up a quota of how many people had to be mm -hmm. in there. They lowered the age to 14 mm -hmm. that you could go be tried as an adult and go yeah. to prison. Then they had these three strike rules, all of these different things. They changed three misdemeanors to a felony, things that you shouldn't even go to jail for. Then then you can go to jail for. You can be a lifetime felon for nonsense over nonsense. And and a lot of people don't understand how critical that was to the black community. Because look how many people in jail now. You mm -hmm. still got over two million people in jail yes. in prison. And the thing is, why increase the prison population? They with the promise, um, Biden wrote that bill. I always hold him accountable for that, yeah, but he wrote yeah. that bill, mm -hmm. even though the black caucus supported it. John they Lewis, all did. And not, not all, because well, I mean, John well, Lewis and Maxine Waters, yeah, John yeah. Lewis and Maxine Waters begged black people not to support it. Not that. to support it. And they said, Clinton and Biden said, we're gonna clean, we're gonna help clean, uh, uh, clean yeah. up your community. 
You don't yeah. clean up a community by locking people up. You clean, you help a community by creating opportunity, by, by education, by jobs, by infrastructure. You got to do, create, you, yeah. you, it got to be something positive. You can't take something negative and make something positive out of something negative. Right. And, uh, and uh, so anyway, um, after I went to the Million Man March and we had a lot of black, um, that I, blacks that I looked up to that didn't support the Million Man March, and I thought that was odd because it wasn't about protest. It's about um, going there, atonement. Right. It was about, uh, as black men, right. atoning, going back to our communities and being responsible mm -hmm. for our communities, mm -hmm. for our kids, different things like that. So I committed 10 times more to be a mentor right. and to uh, not just the sports, to all the kids. So when I came back, I joined Concerned Black Men in of Petersburg, and that's a national organization. Yes, yes. And I, I joined that in 1995 after the Million Man March, and I've been with them ever since. Mm -hmm. We just had an activity today. We took okay. um, we took 30 some boys down to Fort Lee after talking to them about etiquette. Okay. And and um, had a form on etiquette. And then we took them bowling at Fort Lee, and uh, every month we have a form with them, and then we take them somewhere. Okay. And while we have an activity next month, we'll be at Virginia State University basketball game. And you how's know, that going so far? How are the kids receiving it so far? They receive it greatly, but see, I, I take it on as a lifetime commitment. Okay. Because um, we, um, um, with the, um, you, just like I have a um, uh, um, two boys that's in it. Their father died during the summer. The grandmother got them. She's on oxygen, different things. Yeah, like that. I, yeah. I do more than just mental. I, I go to you. the house. I, got I go you, to yeah. the schools. I go to all the right mm -hmm. now. Uh, I'm on the school board, but uh, we have a sixth grade academy at Blanford. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, uh, school and um, me and another fellow named Virgil Ravish, mm -hmm. we um, we served there Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay. Doing lunch, all lunch periods, and sometimes doing the PE, working with the kids, but being there, helping things to go smooth. Okay. Being being out front with them. Um, and, and the thing is, is that uh, um, right now, uh, the principal said, man, this is the best school year we ever had. Because this is the first year we okay. did it. Usually okay. we go from school to school. Okay. But I said, this is where the kids come together for the first time in the okay. sixth grade. So for the whole city coming together. And, um, and so what we're going to do, we, we, we're, we're trying to create um, each year um, those relationships where that we're not going to have those problems with fighting and all this bickering mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Get them focused on the education. Okay. Teach them that learning is power. Yeah. You don't know nothing. You, you, yeah. and, and you, you have no power. Have Teach none. them to compete instead of fight. Yeah. Motto, don't fight, compete. You know, and you know, just like when I came along, you know, I would learn things and it would stick with me. Uh, I remember when I was at Peabody, historic Peabody. Mm -hmm. First black high school in right. the state of Virginia. Right. I remember the pledge today that I learned in 69. Mm -hmm. I pledge to persevere. Each letter of P by the means son. P, I pledge to persevere when things in my life become difficult. E, elevate myself to a high intellectual and moral mm -hmm. standard. A, accept responsibility for my actions. B, behave in a manner that shows maturity. O, obey all the rules. Uh, uh, D, do at least one good thing daily. And Y, yield to those who only want the best for okay. me. See, those things stick with you. Those, those, are, those they help me to make decisions. Okay. They help, and see, I pass that stuff on to the youth, you need to grab hold to things that gonna help you okay. to make good decisions. Mm -hmm. um, um, teach, the, teach them young boy to, um, at 11 years old and the young girls that, hey, you gotta take responsibility not only for yourself, for your body and mm -hmm. learn how to protect yourself mm -hmm. and learn how, and be responsible. Yeah. And because you're changing, you're in puberty now. Yeah. So even though you're young, you're a young woman, you're a young man, teach them not to hit, and, and different things like yeah. that, and the the whole school is better. Yeah, because of the those those type of things that are being instilled in them, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna see a big difference in 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 uh, in uh, this group. Looking forward to it. In closing, tell us for people who want to con who want to join Concerned Black Men, what's the best way to do that? Oh, we're well, just go online. Concerned Black Men is okay. a national organization, but if you in 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 this area. Um, um, if you go online, you can find it, but um, it's easy to um, go online and find the website. Okay. And, and Concerned Black Men of Petersburg, and, and that's easy. And um, we're a 501c3 nonprofit, and um, 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 a lot of different 
nonprofits who had to donate to mm -hmm. uh, other nonprofits and support different activities that are working with the community. We just received um, some checks from other nonprofits oh, to nice, help nice. continue to do what okay. we're doing. Okay. So we're, we're getting a lot of support from the community. So I imagine if you don't want to join Concerned Black Men for whatever reason, any organization, or maybe you can start your own. Anything that's doing something to help give back, to help the community is a good thing. Hey, let me tell you something. If you don't work with these kids, yeah. crime is mobile. They're not going to these, uh, you know, you're going to deal with them later. You're going to see them again. Mm -hmm. So you got to help them. The, the, the key is, we, the, the key to um, the goal of public schools is to do one thing, create a good, productive citizen, key word being good. Mm -hmm. If I don't care how productive they are, if they're not good, yeah, we're gonna have we some got problems. a problem. We're going to have some <laughs> problems. Have so some the thing problems. is, is that um, that's, um, that's what we need to pass on. Okay. I mean, you know, they, it, they're not going to get this on their own. Just, they're not going to get this like by chance. Get own, You're yeah. not going to get it by chance. Right. You got you, you to gotta invest in them. And, if, and, and the only way this is going to get better, the people that say they're committed, they got to be willing to inconvenience themselves. If you're working with a child and you're not willing to inconvenience yourself, to give up your time and everything, then you're not going to be able to help them. Not the way you think mm -hmm. you're going to help them, but you got to be willing to inconvenience yourself to help a child. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And on that note, we will close. Good to see you again and look forward to seeing the good things, the fruits of your labor and these young guys and girls that you're helping. All Thanks right. again, as always. All right, before I go, I yes. just want to say hi to my wife, Kim, and okay. uh, all them, my, like my kids and them grandbabies. And I let them know <laughs> I was, you know, didn't, <laughs> didn't not just them. sitting here and not thinking about them. Yeah. I think about them always. Always. All always. right. <laughs> Folks, until next time, for all the crew that makes this possible, thank you. Have a good Christmas and a new year. Enjoy yourself. Stay safe. Look out for each other. We will see you next time in 2024. Okay.